Hello beautiful people. It has been an absolute age since I posted my last video and I really do apologize for that. But I have just entered the final three months of my PhD so I have been writing like crazy to try and get it finished. In addition, I am sick. You might be able to hear this. And this is the third time I have been sick since returning from Brazil in June. Probably something to do with my elevated stress levels and I have been struggling with insomnia. So for the past few months, my life has been a bit of a disaster. So I have not managed to publish any videos, but I did film this vlog while I was in Brazil in June attending a conference. And I finally found the right combination of time and motivation to edit it for you so I can put it online. Just a quick note about the channel. There are some new subscribers since my last video. So welcome to the channel and thank you so much for subscribing. Going forward for the next few months of the year until the end of the year, my posting schedule will remain somewhat erratic and potentially non-existent as I try to finish my thesis. But after hand in, I promise I will be back with a vengeance and I will be making a lot of video content. So please, if you enjoy my content, subscribe to my channel, stick it out with me. And yes, please just bear with me. I think that's enough babbling for now. So without further ado, here is my vlog of Brazil and I really hope that you enjoy it. Welcome to another vlog. These past few weeks have just been insane. The last time I spoke to you I was coming from snowy Germany and now I am speaking to you from sandy sunny Brazil. So I'm here to attend a conference, the Sharks International Conference, which is super cool. I'm so excited to be here. It's um, an international conference. Everybody who works on sharks and stingrays is here to attend the conference. Um, but these past few weeks have been so hectic like I applied for funding to come to this conference all the way in February and they only let me know two weeks ago that I got the funding to come so these past two weeks have just been crazy trying to book all my accommodation and my flights and all that kind of stuff and I mean it's Brazil it's really far away and it's a little bit difficult to get here so it was like super complicated but after I think it was 30 hours of travel and four flights I finally made it to a small little town up the north coast of Brazil called Jao Pessoa um, and I'm here on the beachfront right now I just went to go register for the conference so I got my cool little name badge over here and I got this awesome bag I hope you can see it um, so yeah, I've just done the registration. It's at this really cool hotel. The conference is at this really cool hotel just located on the beach. It's kind of a little bit that way. Um, so yeah, tonight is the opening function for the conference. Uh, until then, not really too sure what I'm going to do. I wanted to go for a snorkel, but the weather is really windy and not that great. So I'll probably just hang around till the opening function this evening. <laughs> of the third edition of Sharks International Conference, held for the first time in Brazil. This is the first truly international event dedicated to sharks raising chimeras.
So last night's function was really cool. There was live music and food and drinks, but my favorite part was really just catching up with the people that I know. You know, what I love about these conferences and, and gatherings like this, and especially in working in the shark and stingray community, is because it's quite a small community of people, you really meet people along the way and you make connections with them. And at events like these, you can reconnect with those people and just catch up. So that was what I was mostly doing last night. Um, I caught up with some people that I met in Australia last year. I caught up with some people from my lab in Rhodes that I haven't seen in a while. Some people who did field work with me in the Seychelles. So it was really, really fun just chatting to them and seeing what's happening in their lives. Today is the first day of talks. It's Monday morning, I'm really excited for today. So how the conference works is that there are three sessions that run concurrently with talks happening in each session and you have to choose which talk you're most interested in and go and listen to it. So there's gonna be lots of talks today, lots of moving around between sessions, but I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be a good day and I'm excited to see what's been happening recently in the world of sharks and stingrays. <laughs> It's an honor to have the chance to speak at the conference and to see so many old friends that I haven't seen for sometimes a couple of years and particularly to see so many new students that I haven't yet met and to learn about the work that everybody's doing. So the notion that sharks are ecologically important is a dogma that's pretty well cited and pretty well accepted. I often hear and see people saying, healthy oceans need sharks. Sharks keep food webs in balance by keeping prey populations in check. Shark populations keep the oceans healthy by removing the sick and the weak. And eliminating sharks will have cascading effects throughout the food web. Sound familiar? We often all say it. But the question is, what does this actually mean? Where does this come from? And what is the actual evidence for these ecological effects? So we're about halfway through the conference now, and I just wanted to give you an update of what's been happening. So the first two days have been really good. Um, in the mornings, we have a plenary talk, which is like a longer 45 minute almost lecture by a more later career professional scientist who's been working in the field for a really long time and has like a lot of knowledge to share. So Monday's plenary was really interesting. It was about um, sharks and rays and the evolutionary history and the diversity that they, that all of the species show uh, in today's day and age. And you know, sharks and rays have been on this planet for almost 500 million years and they've survived two mass extinction events. So they're really, really cool animals and just the way he spoke about them was super cool because if you allow these animals to go extinct, you are losing out on 500 million years of evolutionary innovation and information. So understanding how these animals work and how they have come to be the way they are is really interesting and it can provide a lot of useful information for us. So they're really important animals. So I just I really enjoyed the way he spoke about um, them in the plenary talk on Monday. The rest of Monday was all about genetics, which is not really my forte, but there were still some really, really interesting talks. Tuesday, yesterday, I it was much better. It was a trophic ecology session, which means it's all about the diets of animals and what they eat. And I gave my talk, which went really well. I got some really good feedback. So I think it was um, well received by the audience. And I'm happy with the way it turned out. Um, and then in the evenings, we do like these poster sessions where instead of people presenting an oral presentation like I did. They make a poster and they present the information on a poster and then in the poster sessions you walk around and if you see a poster that interests you, you chat to the person about it. Um, so those poster sessions have been really interesting in the evening. But yeah, full on days. I mean, the talks go the whole day, poster session in the evening, grab some dinner with some friends and then it's bedtime. Um, today is the off day of the conference, the middle of the conference, so people can do like some touristy things around the city. Um, I'm just doing a bit of work this morning and then this evening I'm heading out for a sunset tour um, with everybody so I am excited for that. 
And when we're working with species, we could simply be trying to understand processes like biology, diet, population structure, uh, physiology, movement. And these are all very important questions and crucial to our understanding of species and their evolution. But in this era of extinction, is that good enough? So, does our research really matter when it comes to conservation? Apparently, we all think it does. So as I write and read and review manuscripts, it's, it's become a trend to justify our research in terms of conservation value. So we have uh, an introduction that often quotes the Dalvey et al. paper. I do it every time. And then we try, there's, we try to explain why our research is important because the species might be on the IUCN red list or it's listed on an agreement like the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species. And of course, we, if it's listed on an agreement or a convention, if it's critically endangered or if it's data deficient, the research is a priority. And our conclusion will always stress that our results are going to support the conservation of species. So we really need to think, though, how our results actually matter. How do they make a difference? And how can we make them matter? 2018 had more than 450 delegates from 47 countries. The event promoted the interaction between scientists and students from all around the world, enabling new research partnerships and new friendships. So the conference is over. We had a really good last two days where the talks were like on telemetry, so the technique you look at how animals move, and then some conservation and fisheries talks, which were also really interesting. And then we had uh, the closing dinner at one of the nearby Brazilian restaurants, which was really nice. The food was delicious. We hit the dance floor, did some dancing. So it was really, really fun. But yeah, then unfortunately, everybody has gone their separate ways now. I've spoken to a lot of people that are actually traveling in Brazil afterwards, but um, I have decided to come to this tiny little, well, it's not tiny, it's a little island um, just off of the coast between Rio and Sao Paulo. It's called Ilha Grande and it's beautiful. I mean, the, look at this beach behind me. So Rio is like back that away um, and I'm on the island now. So I'm going to be here for a week volunteering and I'm really looking forward to it. Going to be doing lots of swimming and some hiking and maybe some snorkeling because this place is super, super beautiful. Oh.